Well, hello, a raft of wandering otters. We are here again, once again at our favorite spot, Marina State Beach. I'll let you look around in a minute, but I gotta warn you, a little bit of spoilers coming up. I am gonna talk about what everybody seems to be talking about, Game of Thrones. Game of Otters on in five, four, Three, two, one. Pan around first. Okay, so, um, I don't have a problem with how Game of Thrones, where it's going. If there was fair warning about it. When I was a teacher, I learned that you, you can't seek to stump your students and expect good results. <laughs> You know, yes, it's a learning experience for them. Yes, they kind of learn to figure things out, but not all of them. And certainly, that's not how you teach a whole group of people, okay? So, whatever uh, the showrunners for Game of Thrones are trying to say, uh, they well, we've left clues, we've made indications and, and whatnot, uh, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I kind of have to call BS because the core person that Danny is did not present itself as somebody that would go to th this extreme, okay? So I'm not going to outright spoil it for you, but I'm just going to say I didn't think that this episode 5 of season 8 was really built up to in a way that it all makes sense it really seems very abrupt and a two episode switch now as I understand it I haven't read the books but as I understand it in the books it's a much easier build up um, uh, or much more clear anyway about where that character is heading and why there may be some reservations about her um, but, uh, you know, we got in this season, we got Sansa being a mean girl and not wanting to get along with Khaleesi. And uh, we got, um, uh, you know, a few points of disappointment and rejection for uh, Danny, But we didn't really get that she had this core character flaw that this would somehow be okay to do what she did. Which is probably the, I want to say the worst atrocity in, in certainly in modern Westerosi history. So, um, anyway, um, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Danny. Uh, I, th I think I've always had some reservations about her. I think the power has corrupted her. But it was up to the writers to make that happen in a way that was logical and you as a reader or a uh, watcher could say, oh, yeah, I saw that coming. <laughs> anyway, you can disagree. You can disagree. But um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, feeling like... Uh, uh, what most people are feeling about Game of Thrones is that um, it's kind of gotten to a point where it um, once about season five or six once the showrunners ran out of book material is when you know the show started to get kind of clunky and awkward so think of it this way think of it as a beautiful manuscript from uh, medieval times that's what George R. R. Martin wrote this beautiful manuscript with with calligraphy uh, uh, and and you know just gorgeous um, 
uh, texture to it and now all of a sudden we've almost got like a, a you know a childlike drawing of getting from point A to point B. We're, we're no longer enjoying the journey we're just getting from point A to point B. It's almost like the showrunner said, well, okay, this is what George R. R. Martin says eventually happens, so we're going to go ahead and make that happen, uh, no matter how. <laughs> so there's the problem. Anyway, I had to, had to get it off my chest. Hope you enjoyed the view. It is the day after Mother's Day here on the Central Coast. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you continue to have a great one. Wandering Otters, we'll see you in the next one.